Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of McNulty's Book Corral. I am your host, Thomas McNulty, and today we're talking about Ray Bradbury. Uh, this is another one of those episodes where we're talking about a solitary author. Ray Bradbury is a special writer for me. Um, that's why he gets his own episode. Um, writers that mean a lot to me get their own episode. Ray Bradbury meant the world to me, and I'm not alone in that. I'm sure there are many of you out there that um, feel the same way. I did meet Ray Bradbury once, and it was a magical moment. Uh, I'll never forget it as long as I live. He was exactly what I had hoped for, which is unusual when you're dealing with celebrities, frankly. I've met a lot of celebrities in my life and my career, and Ray Bradbury is up there, uh, is one of the better ones. Um, I also corresponded with Ray Bradbury for many years, and he responded to every letter I ever sent. That is not unusual for Ray Bradbury. Uh, he did that with probably thousands of people. Now, I want to make it clear that I met Ray Bradbury once and I corresponded with him, but that doesn't mean I knew him personally very well. Um, I think there's a lot of people that met him once or twice and they, you know, they refer to him as if you were blood brothers and hung out together. Maybe you did. If you did, I envy you. I think that's fantastic. I didn't know him personally. I only met him once. But Ray Bradbury had a profound and long-lasting um, effect on my life, a positive effect on my life. Great literature does that for people. And again, the purpose of this video series is to encourage you, hopefully to encourage young readers to pick up some of these books. Now with Ray, I started out with Ray reading his science fiction. Back in the 70s, ours for Rocket. Who doesn't remember this, right? What a fantastic book. This is a bantam. Uh, S is for Space, R is for Rocket. Probably two of the most famous titles that he had out there. Um, I read, the, you know, reading this in junior high school, uh, in high school, I, over and over and over, uh, really, really affected me deeply. The Golden Apples of the Sun was another collection. These are short story collections, by the way. A Medicine for Melancholy. Now, I love these. I love these, um, yeah, these are the Bantam paperbacks. I love the, these are the ones that I mentioned in the Scary Books episode, had Ray's image on them. And so these are really fun to collect. Uh, if you want to do the whole uniform set, you could find them on eBay quite e easily and they're great collections to have. Vintage paperback collectors know exactly what I'm talking about. These are our preferred reading copies. Um, the Illustrated Man, another famous collection. Ray Bradbury wrote so many short stories that they were collected. Uh, his most famous book, of course, is this one, which is Fahrenheit 451, a marvelous book. I don't think it's his best book, but I think it's a great book. It's a great piece of American literature and um, interesting view on uh, society. You can't go wrong with this. My favorite, I think my favorite is this one. I have a lot of favorites, you know. That's obvious, right? Uh, the Martian Chronicles is really, for me, a prose poem. What Ray did here was he took some of the short stories that he published in the Pulp Fiction magazines and he fused them together and uh, connected the narratives with other little short pieces so that you have this mosaic of life on Mars. Uh, again, I read it as a prose poem. Um, it's unlike any other science fiction novel ever done. Uh, if you can even call it a novel. I think it is. Uh, it's an epic tale. Beautifully written. Um, poetic, that's why I'm calling it a prose poem. Ray was an imagistic writer. Um, the Martian Chronicles is a great starting point for people interested in creative writing. If you want to see what a master did, um, Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles is one of those books to learn from. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't say enough about it. Here's another uh, collector's paperback, The Machineries of Joy. Again, these were short stories that he did. Now, I want to show you two hardcovers. The Stories of Ray Bradbury, I believe, is still in print. This collects a lot of, sto of stories. This was Alfred Knopp uh, collection for Ray. Here's Ray on the back. This is the hardcover. I think there's a big trade paperback available of this edition, as well as Bradbury, Ray Bradbury Stories. This was William Morrow. So we have two different hardcover collections of Ray's stories. 
and the contents are different. He wrote that much. Look at how thick these books are, okay? They're fantastic. So this is also, these are like quintessential Ray Bradbury collections. Um, great books to have in your home library. Highly recommended to get these um, because you can go through these and every year and just continuously enjoy them and share the stories with, with your children and young readers. A couple of more, The Halloween Tree. The Halloween Tree is a pretty famous book. Um, it's another one that I, I look at this, I think it's like a prose poem. Ray did that, you know, he was so, so heartfelt and poetic and so imagistic. It, it was like he was writing poetry in prose form, prose poem. So, by the way, we'll have an episode on poetry coming up. Dandelion Wine. Ray Bradbury was born in 1920 in Waukegan, Illinois. He is an Illinois boy. Okay, a lot to be said for uh, Illinois, which is where I'm located. Um, and this is one where he's looking back at Waukegan and he fictionalized it as Greentown, Illinois. And this was a, a location that he would return to again and again throughout his life. Uh, Dandelion Wine is not science fiction. It is fictionalized memoir. Uh, I can't say enough about this either. Another one, fantastic. Um, and then Something Wicked This Way Comes, this is a repeat title. If you watched my Scary Books episode, I talked about this book. Uh, this is a really chilling novel. Ray could do it all. He could do science fiction. He could do, he could do fictionalized, heartfelt memoir. He could do scary books, and he could do science fiction. Uh, for you collectors out there, yes, I know you were waiting for this, and, you know, I couldn't resist. Signed copies. I have more than I'm going to show you. Um, Ray signed these for me. And uh, a graveyard for lunatics. There's Ray on the back. What a great picture. Uh, here's another one. Uh, I have multiple signed copies. From the Dust Returned was one of his later ones. And From the Dust Returned was a great book because he did the same. He used the same technique here that he did with the Martian Chronicles. And he took some of his stories and he fused them into a narrative structure. To, to create a novel. And this is also a signed edition uh, that I have. He signed this one on an odd page. He signed this on the title page uh, here. So that's Ray in a nutshell. I can't say enough about Ray Bradbury. I You know, there are so many people that I talk to that um, feel the same way about Ray Bradbury that I do. When he, when he departed this world in 2012, uh, you know, that, that, that one stung. Tough one. Now, I'm going to read you a Christmas poem that Ray sent to me. And I know there's probably thousands of you out there that received this same poem uh, from Ray. Uh, Dogs think that every day is Christmas. Great poetry uh, sent out uh, in 1995 and 1996 by Ray Bradbury to people that he had been corresponding with or family and friends. Dogs think that every day is Christmas. Dogs think that every day is Christmas. They lap it with their necktie tongues, devour it with wide bright eyes that say, look at that weather. Try it on. Just my size. They lean out car windows like drunks at bars, snuffing gin, while drivers in those self-same cars running lose. They win. They mark each tree in passing just to let the world know, I was here, do you see? I was here. From the start of a glorious season to the end of a marvelous year, all smiles with a Gwydon staff, tail wag. They silently shout, bark, gee whiz, because dogs wake each morning to Christmas. And damn, stop and think now. It is. Ray Bradbury. Man, oh man. I actually get choked up on this one because to receive this in the mail, there's the actual envelope that he sent it to me in. Um, thousands of people, I'm sure. If you're one of them, go. You know, uh, let me know. I, I know I've talked to people that have received this poem from Ray, so I'm not I'm not unique. Um, I was lucky. Okay, I consider myself a fortunate man to receive that from Ray Bradbury. Now, Ray also wrote wonderful letters to me over the years. Here's another one. I loved his letterhead. Now, his letterhead changed um, from time to time. And here's, a, here's another one that I had 
So you can see how his letters changed. His letterhead would change over the year, over the years. Um, but Ray responded to every letter I sent to him. He responded to every email I sent to him. Uh, he was a truly generous man. Uh, you know, I'm saying that from here. Um, how many writers do that? I, I don't know. I'm sure they're out there. Uh, I just think, you know, the. I've met a lot of writers. I've, I've met a lot of celebrities. Ray, Ray Bradbury was in a class by himself. Uh, so I was a, I'm fortunate, a very fortunate man, as I'm sure some of you were as well. Uh, because, you know, I, as I said, I know that there's people that received letters from Ray Bradbury uh, in poems that he would send in the mail. He was always encouraging to other writers, always 100% encouraging to writers. That is special. Ray, tip of the Stetson from McNulty's Book Corral. You're a wonderful man. You are, you are still, your spirit shines bright. All right, as always, thank you for checking in to this special episode. Find Ray Bradbury in your library. Find him in your school library. Read Ray Bradbury. Stay well, stay happy, and remember, feed your brain. Read a book. <laughs>